You know, I'm so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrows. Glory be to God in the highest for what he's done already in our lives. And the fact that you have seen this month, that shows that God loves you. Now, if it is over for you, then you will have been buried in the grave. But I have a prayer to pray for you if you can shout the loudest, amen, that you will not be described by the obituary posters in the name of Jesus. Neither will your families begin to look for you in the cemeteries in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you're God. We appreciate it because you're wonderful. Thank you for your word. And as you bring your word to your people, let your word heal and deliver them. Thank you, most excellency. In Jesus' mother name, we pray. Amen. Now listen today, we are talking about receiving the power of God. You hear me? Life without power is sour. Christianity without power is just your play. Because you hear me? We are in a world where it is a place of battle. Bible said in the book of Job 14 verse 1, it said, every man born of a woman is a few days, and the few days are full of trouble. Now listen to me. In a world of trouble, the only answer to trouble is power. Have you not read in the Bible, in the book of John chapter 5, and the Bible told us about a pool of water of Bethsaida, where the water need to be troubled, because only trouble can stop trouble. The water need to be troubled by an angel once in a year. And whatever kind of sickness that jumped into it at first, the troubled water will use the troubled strength to end the trouble of that man's life. I can see your troubles enter into God's trouble because it's time to trouble the troubles by the power of God. Hear me? Power is an answer. The only answer to satanic attacks. When you meet the devil, you don't explain to him, you don't appeal to him, you use the power God has given to you to deal with him. Why? That was what God said. You need this power. Jesus Christ said to them in the book of Acts 1 8, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. You can't represent God without power because power is your explanation of God, your expression of God. The Bible says that God is power and God has power. And that's why when you are connected to God, your identity is power. When the demons look at the seven sons of Kepha, they found in them that there was no character of God, no anoma, and there was no power in them, no dynamis, no dynamis, no energy. Listen to me, we, if you lack power, I'm telling you, you suffer a lot. There are levels of power, and I'm going to be talking about that today. The Bible says in the book of John 1 verse 12, that the kingdom that we belong is a kingdom that you need power to become a son of God there. It's a kingdom of kings and not of slaves. It's a kingdom where everybody is a king. Even the one who actually brought us into kingship, say we are joint heirs with him before the father now listen to me beloved you got to receive power because power is the expression of the god in you without power nothing moves because power is the ability to be in control the ability to perform you can't perform anything without power your eyes see by the power of sight your hands move by the power of might you, listen to me when you lack power nothing works for you because power alone sponsor movement from wherever you are to wherever you are going because between here and there the middle is t what is different there is t and that is time for time for time but hear me time can be available opportunity can open when you lack power there'll be no movement there'll be no fulfillment of purpose as god has actually intended it god's intention are expressed and manifested through power and that's why anytime god wants to lift you above where you are it releases power upon you there are powers at different levels and we'll be talking about that today let's see the scriptures very quickly about power now in the book of luke 10 19 it said god has given us power 
to tread upon serpent and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you when you lack power you'll be hurt a lot but when you have power nothing can hurt you second samuel 22 and verse 32 to verse 33 it says for who is god save the lord and who is the rock save our god god is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect for things to be accurate and perfected you need power to sponsor that event power is a sponsor of every event nothing happens without power even when god speaks the power of his word is what coordinates the affairs of the world and that's why even hebrew 1 verse 3 says god operate and hold everything by the power of his word because the word is power now let's see the book of Psalms 2 verse 11 it said god spoke once twice have i heard that power belongs to god in the book of john chapter 3 verse 8 the bible told us about the wind power which everyone that received the kingdom of god has in the book of john 3 verse 5 it said in verse 3 it said Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom that we can see is the oppression of power in us now. Because without this kingdom with us, in us, for us, we cannot really fulfill the purpose that we are here. We are here to represent God, to stand for God, and to show forth his all madness. That when men look at us and say, no, this must be God working in this man, in this woman. Now, the Bible now said in verse 5, is that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. There's a kingdom to see, there's a kingdom to enter. The one to see is the one that power gives you the privilege to manifest. And the one to enter is the one we are heading towards after we have lived the life that pleased God in the flesh on earth. Now, in verse 8 of that John 3, the Bible said the wind bloweth wherever it lives. He mm. said, no man know where he's coming from and nobody know where he's going. He said, so are everyone born of the spirit. When you are born of the spirit, you are now in a higher class, a supernatural realm whereby you are connecting God. You are operating in the likeness of the will and the purpose of God. You are just right on purpose, on time, on point with God's mind and God's will. God loved David because he was a man after his heart. Why? His heart will always connect with God's heart. He will always do things the way God wants them to be done. And that is how God wants us to live. And that's why he wants us to be spiritual. You know, John said in Revelation 24, he said, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. Oh my goodness. You hear me? You hear me? And he said, I had a voice in the spirit saying, come up, eat higher. Now, you can only go higher if you're in the spirit. Because in the spirit, your movement will be higher. Now, he now says something. In the book of Matthew 10, verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus Christ called his disciples. And he gave them power against demons and all manners of sicknesses. And he asked them, he said, heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Because only power can make you oppose any other kingdom and overcome them. Every country, they are always respecting themselves. Why? Because they know. When you talk about power, you don't know the level of the other personality. And so because of that, you can't just, you know, harass anyone. Because when anybody has power, hey, there's nothing he cannot do. And that's why God wanted to receive power. Because the territory of the kingdom of the earth wants... And they must submit to the word of God, to the will of God, to the program of God, and to the kingdom of God and of his Christ. And God must rule the earth through us. Alright, now when you have God's power, you have God's direct line. Because power is God's direct line. When you have God's power, you can walk for God, operate for God, and do the will of God in the flesh. Now let's see what happened in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8. And verse 37 to 40. There you see the man called Philip. Mm, Jesus Christ. But I would say after he has interpreted what the man was reading to him, the spirit of the Lord carried him. And he just disappeared before the man. The man couldn't see him again. That's the wind power of the Holy Ghost. This is power. Power at work and on duty. Now let's see the book of Romans 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 and verse 11. And the Bible said there, it said, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall raise up, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. When you got the spirit 
that actually raised Christ, which we call the power of resurrection. That was what Paul wanted to know. And he said in the book of Philippians 3 verse 10, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When you know the power of resurrection, there's no death that can seize you because the power of resurrection in you will always swallow death in victory. So you got to receive this power because by this power, your body shall be energized. When you are energized, you perform miracles. When you are energized, you command demons to get out. You seize demons, you cast them out. Because by power, you are in control. Power puts you in control. In the book of Deuteronomy 8.18, the Bible says, And thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. There's a power to get wealth. You hear me, beloved? If God does not release the power to you, you can't get wealth. You can only hear about it, read about it, but you can have it. And so God wanted to have it. And that's why God gives you power to get wealth. And then there's another power, power to eat the wealth that you have gotten. Because many got wealth, but they couldn't eat out of the wealth that they have gotten. Let's see Ecclesiastes 6, chapter 5, and verse number 19. It says, Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, and had given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answered him in the joy of his heart. All right? When God answers you in the joy of your heart, it gives you power to eat the fruit of your labor, to eat the wealth that he has granted you. But some people don't enjoy it, and that will not be your portion. In chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, he said, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. A man to whom God had given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanted nothing for his soul of all that he desired. Yet, God giveth him not power to eat thereof. But a stranger eateth it. This is vanity and it is an evil disease. There is disease, there's an evil disease. Disease sees you, sees your body, sees your system. But an evil disease does not allow you to eat out of your labor. God will give you power. Even to eat of your labor. Now, we have power of God's revelation. Power of the testimony of the word of God. Ephesians 3 verse 20. It said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above whatever you can ask or think according to his power that worketh in us. Now listen to me. The level of your revelation of God is the level of what you can receive from God. Because your revelation determines your elevation. There cannot be transformation in your life without revelation. You need to know who God is and how it applies to your life. The way God has planned life is that every effort of man will be futile without the support of God. Because we came from God and we can only fulfill our purpose through God. That's why I said, without me, you can do nothing. All right? In the book of Proverbs 18, verse 21, the Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. That means the tongue controls what life we, we do where life will be and where death will also be. So, you got power on your tongue. You got authority there. All right? In the book of 1 Corinthians 1, 25, it said, Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. And that's why when Christ enters into you, the power of God just enter into you. And I said also, in the book of 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 4, to his divine power, he gave them to us. So, God's divine power is so important and you need it to live. In the book of Romans 1 verse 16, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. Not it has the power, but that gospel is the power. Gospel is God's spelling. It is good news. What God brought to the kingdom of men, that men will be aware that now power is restored to you. That news will make you new. That news, if you receive it, and you walk by it. That's the gospel. The gospel of the death of Christ taking our place and his burial and his resurrection for our victory. Because Bible says God made him sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might become the righteousness of God. And so now when you get born again and you accept the word of the cross as yours and that Christ died for you and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, now that gospel you have received and believed becomes a part of God in you. And that's why it's so awesome the power that is in us and with us 
and for us. The Bible says when God, which is the power, is for us, who can be against us? Now in the book of Luke 1 35 and Hebrew 1 verse 3, there we see the highest authority on earth, which is the word of God. The Bible says God upholds, God controls everything by the word of his power. Hallelujah. Now he said in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4 and 5, it says, don't build your faith on the intelligent words of men, but build on faith on demonstration of power. Oh my goodness. Because in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 20, it said, the kingdom of God is not in words, but in demonstration of power. If you've got the kingdom of God in you, that is the word of God in you, then you must demonstrate the power. Because it is a kingdom of power, whereby we put the devil and all his court under our feet. The battle with the devil is a battle under your feet. That's why I said, I give you power to tread, not to box, but to tread the devil and serpent, scorpions, and all powers of the enemy. And he said, none of them shall hurt you. Hallelujah. When you receive this power, hmm, your life changes. Because by this power, you cast out devils. By this power, you put the devil where he belongs. Because First John 4, 17 says, as he is, so we are in this world. In Matthew 12, verse 28. Matthew 12, 28. It says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. When you receive this power, you receive the Spirit, because the Spirit comes before the power. The Spirit is container of the power. And when the power comes upon you, the Bible says you can cast out devils and that means the kingdom of God is come unto you. Now listen to me, beloved. When you receive this power, you must exercise the authority. For the highest degree of every believer is found in the book of Job 22, 28. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Our power is voice activated. We must receive it inside and then speak it out, demonstrate it because we are not to just keep it, we are to do, demonstrate it. Life is the most difficult examination. And uh, it is difficult mostly for people who choose to imitate others. Trying to check people's answer because they think that our questions are the same. The, 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 the complicated thing about life is that we don't have the same question paper. And so if you are trying to imitate somebody else, you are just limiting yourself. Imitation brings you limitation. You got to just attend to God. Let go wire you with the spirit of understanding with the spirit of the knowledge of the scripture because he said he opened their eyes that they might understand the scripture by the understanding of the scripture you stand out and then you overcome every level of battles now we need this power without this power we cannot go far how can we receive this power number one move from becoming a caller of god to a server of god what do I mean? In the book of Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, As many as called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation comes by calling his name. But power doesn't come that way. How does power come? In the book of Exodus 23, verse 25, the Bible says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and bless your water, and take away sickness from the midst of thee. He now said, hey, All your enemies are in trouble because he will displace them to put you there power god works for you when you serve him look at elisha he served elijah and he got double portion of his power what about joshua joshua served moses and he got double portion of his power listen to me beloved you need to serve don't just be a caller of god but be a server of god somebody who is ready to give unto god reasonable service romans 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies unto the Lord as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When you make yourself available to God and you are serving God with the whole of your heart, I tell you, that's the most reasonable service that you can offer. And by that service, you are sure going to receive power. Because as long as you are with him, you are for him. All right. Now, after you have done this, the next thing to do is to honor God with your life. Honor God with your offering, your substances, the first fruit of your, of your increase. You don't stop there. You give God the honor due to his name. Honor his servant. 
It said in the book of Mark chapter 6 from verse 2 to 5. It said Jesus Christ could not do so much miracle, mighty works in his village. He said what? He said a prophet is not honorable where they know him. Listen, don't be so used to the anointed men of God that the anointing doesn't work for you again. Because the pastor or the prophet you don't respect, hear me? The anointing on them cannot work for you. Because the Bible says that that man beside the beautiful gate in Acts chapter 3, when he saw Peter and John, he set his attention towards them. And then he was expecting something from them. And when they saw that, they said, look at us. And they said, good, uh, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. They manifested the power. He received the benefit of the power because he had faith and he respected them. So honor those that God has given to you as your prophet because every man of God is like a postmaster. They are loaded with people's gifts, people's, you know, parcel from heaven. And when you believe in them, you receive them. I will say, he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So, beloved, you got to move from there, from serving and honoring. Then you go to the next one, which is command. Command. You believe in God, you believe in his prophet. Like Jesus Christ said, believe in me. Believe also in my father. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Many things are there waiting for you. All right? And then Joseph also said in 2 Corinthians 20, 20, he said, believe God, you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you will prosper. When you move from then, the next thing is to command. Hear me? If you can command, something will change. Mark 11, 23, 24. And thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea. If you do not doubt in your heart, you have whatever you say. Number four, walk in unity with God's word with God's people. Because the Bible says when they were assembled together and they were all in one accord, then the day of Pentecost came upon their life because when unity is attained, then the church can experience the move of God's power. Hear me? Power can come on you if God knows that you understand your assignment. Because it will not just give you power because you need power. It will give you power because you must use that power for its assignment. If you have not discovered your assignment, you will not be empowered to do it. So you must discover your assignment for you to be empowered to do it. Because you are to subdue the earth in the name of the Lord and do what pleases him. Hallelujah. Now the next thing you need to do to receive this power is to ask for it. Ask for this power. The Bible says if we that are evil men know how to give good gifts to our children, our day shall our heavenly father not give the Holy Ghost to those who ask for it. Now there are different levels of power. Number one, we have the delegated power. That's the power you receive as you get born again. Because you accepted him. said as many as received him, he gave power to become sons of God. John 1 verse 12. Now the second power is the accumulated power. Power you accumulate by studying the word of God. Power you accumulate by service. Power you accumulate by you know waiting on God. For Bible said, they that wait on the Lord, he renews their strength. So that they can mount up with wings as eagles. And they will run and they will never be tired. They will walk and they will not be faint. Now the next level of power is energy. Energy is power that is going to be very explosive. After you have accumulated it now, it is now becoming a part and parcel of you. It is now becoming a lifestyle. You are now so used to it. You are now so much in it that you now move to the next level we call generator power. A power that moves on the inside of you that you can generate season for yourself. A man like Elijah operated in the generated power because he can just say whatever he wants to say, defend the name of his God, and God will carry them out. And Bible says, How can you have this one? By praying the Holy Ghost. Jude verse 20. He said, Building up your most holy faith. It's a most holy faith, not just faith. You build it by praying in the Holy Ghost. Hear me? If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, you don't know what power you are releasing. Because prayer means power release at your express request. I want to stop there right now. You need Jesus in your life. Without Jesus, you can have power. And if you lack power, demons will do care practice around your life. They will make your life a refuse place. They, you can't refuse them. Because why? The only way to react and refuse the enemy is to have power to fight them. And now I want to pray with you. Close your eyes wherever you are and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know that without you I can do nothing. When you are not in me and with me, 
I'm going to lose everything. Because it was only you in the life of David that made him to win. Today, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I choose to serve you and to follow you all the days of my life. No turning back. Today, release your power into me and upon me as you have promised. And let this power take the control of me. That I may live for you and walk with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for you right now. Because the power is available. As you shout, amen, receive the power. Receive the power. Receive the power. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of Jesus. The power of resurrection. The power that will quicken your mortal body. The power that will make you act in the place of God. The power that will make you walk for God and be an agent of possibilities. In the name of the Lord, an agent to change. Making things to happen according to the will of God. Receive that power now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Conquer this battle and become more than a conqueror. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mother name, we pray. Amen. Now, these books, I want to recommend them for you. Deliverance and Miracles, your sure link to victory. Beloved, you need to know about deliverance, not what some people do tell you about deliverance. Hear me? Deliverance is you knowing what puts you in charge. The knowledge of God that puts you in charge and puts you in control. Because the devil you don't know, you, can, you don't know how to handle. He said, be sober, be vigilant. For adversary, the devil roaring like a lion looking for who to devour. If you don't know how to devour, what he's looking for you to devour, he may end up devouring you. Okay? Get this book. It will explain a lot of things to you. And here, destroying the weapons of the wicked. When the wicked form their weapons, you got destroying power to destroy. First John 3, 8. But for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You are that Son of God acting in the place of Christ because now Christ lives in you to destroy his works. God bless you. You know, I'm so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy. Cute and not a bad.